Hi, this is Lorene. If you'll give me a minute to clear, center, and balance my energy, we'll get started. Um, um, I, uh, I'm uncertain where to start, um, when I was clearing my energy, um, I just had a lot of really profound, uh, clairvoyance visions and um, astral travel that occurred and uh, I'm not sure if I want to talk about that yet um, but uh, so when I asked what should I start with um, it, it always says you'll know you'll know so at the end of the video the last video um, there was just so much information coming in I couldn't really transition to another topic and um, it was just too much and uh, the only thing I remember is it was something about the Zeta Reticuli and that's all I can remember um, but today I uh, sometimes I do cards I use cards for myself I don't do it very often but um, uh, sometimes I just enjoy pulling them they're very relaxing um, and I bought this deck um, beyond Lemur Lemuria and I pulled one of these cards and I was looking at it and um, it's they're very visual um, very artistic very detailed and um, a lot of colors, a lot of lines, um, beings, um, a lot of flow in these cards. Mm. And so anyway, I pulled this one card and I don't have the deck out. Um, I can't remember which card it was anyway, but there was a being on the front and it looked kind of like a mermaid. It had a tail and it had like scales on it on the tail and um, and then it had like points of light in the third eye in the heart on both hands and then it had these waves of energy coming off of her but then also in the background there were these points that look like stars and as soon as I started looking at it, I saw the points that looked like stars and they were energetic. I knew immediately they were energetic centers in the universe. And so what that told me is stars are energetic centers in the universe, just like um, Mother Earth has energy centers, the ley lines and so on. People talk about working with the energy centers and the ley lines. The universe has the same thing. So the suns are the energy centers and there are ley lines throughout the universe. So that came in very strong. And then I saw these waves around the being, right? So I knew those were waves of energy. Um, when I talked about the last video, I talked about um, deconstructive and constructive interference and how those waves of uh well you could see it as energy you could see it as uh also light waves move in the similar monochromatic uh light waves move in the same manner um but anyway the being had waves coming off of her so i saw these points energy centers throughout the universe with an inherent understanding of those ley lines that connect those which told me which implied a matrix okay if you see a matrix you, it's almost like a, sh a graph paper where the 
where the lines cross would be an energy center and the lines that create the graph paper would be ley lines, right? So the universe is basically a field of energy and it's conscious, okay? And then after, when I was looking at the card, all of a sudden I understood the birth of the soul. So I read um, Michael, um, I can't remember his last name right now, but he wrote the book Journey of the Soul. Uh, it's a good book. I've read the first one and the second one. Um, when I first had my spiritual awakening, just kind of as an introduction to this uh, in incarnations or reincarnation, because raised, being raised Catholic, it wasn't something I was very strongly versed in, and it just gave me a different perspective, okay? Um, but um, Michael Newton, um, and... Uh, so he talks about the birth of the soul. But when I was looking at this card, what was expressed to me was this idea of this matrix being conscious, this divine energy that we know as source energy, the creator of all things, this consciousness is a field of energy and it's eternal and it's conscious and a thought at the creation of this universe and every other universe that's this energy is created the first thought or idea of creation creates a wave okay it creates a wave of thought. And as those waves pick up, or as a second wave of thought happens, it moves, it starts to move. And The so when I was looking at the being, there was a energy center in her eye, in her third eye, in her heart, and in both her hands. So, as that thinking part creates those waves of thought, waves of energy, the heart is can be considered the fire. Okay, the heart that unconditional love, that emotion is the fire it's the spark that creates that begins the creation of life so it's the conscious idea of the first thought or conscious thought of creation sparked by the emotion of love from the heart now since this field isn't a physical energy, physical being, it is a consciousness. We, we place um, a physical value to what that heart emotion um, is. And we want to see it as a spark, okay? We'll visualize it as a spark, which creates frequency, okay? So with the wave of energy of light energy from the thought and the spark of frequency from the heart or we can even see the heartbeat the sound of the heartbeat creating frequency these are the first steps of creating a new reality okay or a reality and it's not just a new universe. It is my reality. It's your reality. It's every energy that has the capacity to create a thought can start to create a reality for themselves. Okay. So when I talk about in the past, I've talked about our thoughts create our realities. That's what I'm talking about. From this 
field create the thought and the emotion creating the universe to me Lorreen thought any and heart emotion creating my reality and creating my own ripple out into the universe okay so we're all creating ripples out into the universe each individual we're all creating um, frequency sparks okay out into the universe and so when I talk about deconstructive and con and um, constructive interference and I'm just talking about a wave two waves one of love and one of hate right constructing and deconstructing imagine how complex those all those waves are for 8 billion people with the depth and breadth of emotions and all the thoughts that are going through their heads. Imagine the complexity of those constructive and deconstructive interference. And then we get into quantum entanglement, which I'm not even getting into right now. I've only dabbled into it, in it, reading about it, but we have quantum entanglement. That's you know, it can become very complex, but let's just focus on ourselves, each individual, and how every thought and every beat of our heart, every emotion creates our reality, okay? So that's the first thing. The second thing, I brought up the Zeta Reticuli um, because when I ha was looking at the card and I started to make those connections about um, the energy centers, the ley lines, the heart, uh, wave frequency, light waves frequency, and the connections of creation, um, the Zeta Reticuli came in because what's happened with the, these energies is they most energy will ascend and, re and leave the physical body and move to a pure energetic form. That is part of their, of their evolution, um, transcendence and ascension, okay? The Zeta Reticuli, who were once Earth humans, they were part of that cabal energy that's leaving, they... Um, moved, consciously decided to move their consciousness from their body to um, a storage source, a store, external storage facility, like a external hard drive or something like that. And actually what's interesting is I watched a movie uh, this weekend called um, Archive. And I don't want to I won't ruin the movie, but the premise is moving a person who's passed, passed away, died, their consciousness into a, like a storage, an electronic storage facility, uh, like a big hard drive. And the loved ones who are still alive can reach back and, and contact and talk to that person for 200 interactions or something like that. So, but after 200 or somewhere thereabouts or hours or something like that, um, the uh, consciousness or whatever starts to break down or the connection can't be maintained so then they're, they pass and there's no longer any type of connection between the person who's passed and the person who's still living. And so as I'm looking at the card and all these epiphanies are coming to me, I realize that the Zeta Reticuli removed their consciousness from their physical bodies stored them in an external hard drive, let's just call it an external hard drive, just some external uh, storage space other than the physical body, because our consciousness resides within my physical body, within your physical body. Each of us carry our consciousness, consciousness within these bodies. They chose, they did not transcend, ascend, evolve, and then release the body they released the body because they could not master the emotional body and um and they house themselves in these external hard drives now what came to me as i'm watching these cards is that eventually their consciousness will 
disintegrate like isotopes um, radioactive isotopes um, they over time will decompose or um, disintegrate I know there's a term but I don't think I'm using the right term but you know what I mean um, that's the same thing that will happen to these their consciousness so as they remove themselves from this divine source energy by releasing their physical bodies and storing their consciousness separate from the collective, right? So they, so they, even though they separated their consciousness, they really haven't. But all energy must return to source all energy must return to the source all conscious energy must return to that source energy it must all be unified okay this whole process of this individual process of incarnation that we go through birth life death birth life death that we as individuals go through the universe as a whole goes through that also and I've talked about how Earth role, um, having the depth and breadth, humanity having the depth and breadth of emotion, and how we will affect the rest of the universe, that we are transcending the universe, that we will at some point carry all the DNA of all beings in the universe, so that all beings in the universe are represented here on Earth and we will transcend and return transcend and ascend and return to source and when that happens that means that that's the indication that the whole of the universe has transcended ascended and returned to source source and unity will be unified once again okay i talked about that in other videos that's just a summary but all energy must reconcile in unity and since the zeta reticuli have separated themselves and they're kind of on their own agenda trying to create their own universe and usurp the divine that's not going to happen because eventually no matter how long they wait no matter how many times they try to create their own reality it's not part of the divine plan it's not part of this um it's the minority and it supports separation. So the majority of the universe is not on that page, following that agenda. But the divine source allows everybody, we all have free will and we're all allowed to experience this universe. Um, by our own terms but and how we see fit but even people who cho choose the darkness who pass they come back to source they come back to God or however you want to see it and then they reconcile those lives and they work through whatever needed to be worked through before they incarnate into their next life and try to be better in their next life and try to they set goals and they try to reach those goals in those lifetimes okay that's what path and purpose is about we all have a path and purpose goals benchmarks and goals and things we are trying to achieve in our lifetimes right and so this Zeta Reticuli have kind of decided they're going to do things their way. They don't want to do it the same way as everybody else. They want to do their own thing. And so they're allowed to do it. But one way or another, they have to return to that source energy. And what will happen over time, and this is, came to me today, was that their consciousness will break down. It's going to eventually break down. And it will, in that way, return to source. And... Um, let me see. I wrote something and I think I want to make sure I get it right because I feel like I'm um Okay, so 
when one ceases to connect with energy centered the matrix the field the that consciousness starts to break down like a radioactive isotope the consciousness will break down and naturally reintegrate into source energy the matrix the field the consciousness transmutes and becomes something new and different or multiple new and different things and then the lessons begin again so if it that energy doesn't pass like one day I'll pass and return to source and a God or this creator of all things and then I'll evaluate this lifetime and decide what my life next lifetime will be um, these energies that are trying to circumvent that process will eventually break down and return to source and then will incarnate as something else but because they've become so despondent um, so um, committed and steeped in the negative uh, in the darkness and they have no real desire to work from a place of balance um, they will need to be what's the word I want um, rehabilitated that doesn't sound right that doesn't feel right either um, so I went through a very difficult time in December and I wanted to get out of my body I just felt like this was too much I couldn't handle the emotion I wasn't suicidal or anything like that but I felt like I just wanted to my soul just wanted to escape the, the confines the confines of the this physical form it was just too much to be constrained and restrained with just the limited emotions and understanding that this brain could um, accept right the the concepts and ideas and reality uh, paradigms that this I'm able to comprehend in this phys physical form were not enough for me to process what had happened it was just too much um, the betrayals and um, lies and manipulation it was just too much I, I didn't think that these people would do the things that they did and it just was overwhelming so I felt like I just needed to release this body meaning just peel the skin off so I can my soul could be free and just kind of reevaluate what was happening and then come back right and maybe it did while I was asleep um, but in this physical form like I had to perceive the world through this consciousness right this world through this consciousness and um, that feel there were moments where I felt like my whole all the energy in my body like all the atoms just separated for a minute and then came back together and then separated for a minute and came back together I don't know how to really explain that um, in in any way other than that I just felt like I kind of came apart for a minute and then came back together and um, and so if this is if this is probably the best way I can explain what will happen to these consciousnesses the energy that creates these consciousnesses will um, come apart reconfigure they're gonna reconfigure and then bring it back together as something new and different okay um, the consciousness will still exist within the ocean or the consciousness of that matrix of that creator energy but it's going to manifest it's going to manifest differently um, it won't manifest the same but its experiences and its ideas will still be present within that matrix of the of uh, source creation um, and I'll use this example it would be like a drop of oil in the ocean it will dissipate into nothingness it'll still be there but it's going to dissipate to 
into and become benign so it won't be harmful anymore okay um, and I also use that um, example when I'm talking about clearing centering and balancing your energy if when you drop negative energy out into the universe one drop of negative energy dissipating out into the universe uh, and source energy transmutes that it's not going to hurt any one person or anything it's just going to be dissipate into nothingness and become benign okay same thing is going to happen to these consciousnesses as they begin to break down um, because they've become almost like a tumor um, and tumors are not necessarily deadly but they can become uncomfortable um, and uh, they spread okay but there's a treatment for this tumor right there's a way to handle it but one of the things the, another good point to bring up or another important point to bring up is that all these negative energies on this planet on other planets uh, the Zeta Reticuli included they all have the opportunity to do the right thing they all have the opportunity to make the right cho choices or the proper choices that were set before them in their path and purpose they we all have a path and purpose and they knew we all know intuitively what our path and purpose is but when we come into this world we lose our memories right we are children and we're born and we uh grow up and then we start to and, and on this world we've been kind of separated from that source energy as children so this the journey back to center to path and purpose has been very difficult if not next to impossible but on other worlds um it's part of the natural process that we're born and our parents help us to remember um, who we are spiritually and they help us to find our path and purpose that's part of our existence and um upbringing um, spiritual upbringing and then our connection to community and what we do for each other and how we connect with, with each other and how we connect to the world that we live and live on and then how we grow evolve and interact and connect with each other and um, transcend ascend evolve and eventually we all will transcend uh, with with unity with the unification right but this is the natural process um, that has been um, usurped on earth but this process of transcendence that we're going through right now is uh, changing that we're going back we've become we've gone full circle we've we've completed this cycle of this oppression okay and the people who are ready to transcend who are done the work who have chosen balance will transcend and other people who have not or don't want to do the work or find this world too difficult will move to a different world um, and we've made those choices with our words and our actions with our consciousness okay um, Um, and so I bring this up because um, it came to me today and that was the first thing that came to mind when I uh, finished clearing centering and balancing my energy was talking about the card and the information that came through um, when I looked at the card um, but also, um, you know, sometimes I get incredibly frustrated with these paradigms that have been created. And so this information helps me to have a better understanding of what's going on and why it's going on. Um, I know that no one no one energy or collective can usurp 
the divine source energy, um, creator of all things. N nothing can do that, but it doesn't stop people or energies or collectives from trying to do that. Um, but it's important that these energies know that um, there is a purpose to each experience. Okay. So the other thing that was, that I escaped me that just came back to me was, um, everybody has a path and purpose and all energy exists for a reason. And there are certain people who are put and everybody has a choice of what they're going to do, how they're going to do it, why they're going to do it. Right. And we, sometimes we make those, um, choices in our mind. We don't tell people what we're doing or why we're doing it. We just do it. Or we even lie about what we're doing and why we're doing it. Right. We're not always truthful. Um, but you can't lie to the divine source. You can't lie to God. You can't lie to, to Satan. You can't lie to anybody. All these energies that when you access the Akashic records, when you can access the Akashic records, you, there's a knowing that you carry. So, okay, so I brought up uh, Lucifer or Satan for one reason. Um, I'm worried I'm going to forget about the other thing. Hold on. So, um, I brought, uh, up Satan and Lucifer because in the last video I talked about balance and that, um, I am heavily fortified and protected by both light angels and dark angels because I protect the balance. Okay. I protect the balance on this world and in doing so I allow both positive and negative energy to exist on this world. Okay. In balance. And that is the purpose of this world and this universe is to eventually reunify unity from a place of balance. Okay. Cause unity is true neutrality. Okay. New unity does not, is not either positive or negative unity represents balance. Okay. So from the dogma of religion, you could say that God represents, um, the light or positive love and Lucifer represents the negative. Okay. And then there are light angels and dark angels, which might be considered demons. Um, but truthfully, both of these energies exist within under the umbrella of unity, right? And, um, and I had an, a video I did probably a year ago where Lucifer first came in and it, he showed himself with a, a mask, uh, with a mask on, and then he took the mask off and he was an angel. He was a beautiful, bright angel, right? Of light. And he said, I am not darkness. I provide the opportunity. And we as humans or we as any other being in the universe choose to either embrace that darkness and go way deep into it and worship it. Or we have moments when let's say like my dad passed a moment of sadness and then I accept that his passing and then I move myself back to center or moments of joy where, you know, my child was born and I experienced that elation and then I move myself back to center, right? All those, every emotion that we have is valid, but we cannot, um, exist wholly in darkness or exist wholly in light, right? So we must come from a place of balance. And so when I talked about that, uh, in the last video where I said that I got all this information from the dark angels and that they were actually protecting my energy field, making sure no dark energy comes in, right? Which was kind of weird, but it was true. Um, the, what came to me after I did that video was how do those, these, this cabal energy, this medium level 
lower level um, p energies who are still trying to maintain control through currency and that hierarchy you know once that cabal energy leaves that would be considered if you read Revelation or if you've read Revelation, the Antichrist, whoever comes in and everybody's going to think they're the hero and the savior. And then pretty much they're going to see that it's just another version of what we had before. And then that's when the Messiah is supposed to come in and save or not save, but help humanity transition to a place of equality, honoring of one another, community, love and light. Um, how does that negative energy feel? How do those people who are worshiping that darkness, um, this idea of oppression and control, right? How do those people feel when they know that the energy that they worship that empowers them has turned their its back on them? Because that's basically what that last video said these energies are so deeply steeped and committed to darkness that they are unable at this point in their evolution to find their way back to balance and that's what's happening on this world this world is moving back to balance and if you can't find your path and purpose and find your way back to your path and purpose and what you were meant to do here on this world then you cannot remain so how do how does that feel? There must be a feeling of betrayal, just as some people who in the past, over the last 30 or 40 years, I would hear, if there's a God, why is, were all these horrible things happening? If there's a God, why are all these horrible things happening? Um, because what you put out is what you get back. And people were committed to separation. People were committed to material possessions. People have become committed to their homes and their cars and not their children. P our society moved itself as a whole through laws, through um, manipulation, telling a woman she had no value if she didn't have a career, telling a woman that she can be just as good as a man because being a woman and a mother wasn't enough. That's not enough. I feel being a woman and a mother, mother is the most important job on this planet. I feel like being a man and a father is also is the second most important job or vice versa. Maybe being a father is number one and being a mother is number two. As a mother, I would say being a mother is number one though. But um, it's completely destroyed the social structure in our society. It's completely, kids don't aren't raised by their parents anymore. They're raised by a nanny or a childcare provider or a daycare center. That's the person instilling the values in your child, not you as a parent. So we became so separated from the importance of the con connections that we have as mother and child, father and child, as family, as community, we've got so far removed from that that everything started falling apart. This wasn't an act of God or divine intervention or lack thereof. This was a result of our conscious choices as human beings on this earth to prioritize material possessions over the most important things in our lives, which is our children, our family, our community. Okay, we're so separate. There's no sense of community, okay? That's what I see, that's what I feel, that's what I'm experiencing. And, um, and so how do these energies feel now that they have, I'm sure in their mind, feel abandoned by that darkness? But they have not been abandoned. They've just been asked to move back to center, okay? But in order for them to move back to center, they have to release some of the paradigms that they live by and all of us are being asked to do that not just this people from the darkness people from that consider themselves in light also need to release the paradigms political structures social structures 
economic structures of this world that we've become used to just because it's what we've always known and people have a hard time with change but change has to happen for this world to move into balance and that's what's being asked of us and so people who are not ready to make the changes necessary to move mother earth into balance won't be incarnating on this world in the future um, the other thing is that there are people that have been born onto this world who are here just to face the darkness and to give that darkness the opportunity to make the right choices and I have an energy that I won't name a person born on this world who I've been exposed to many of their past lives and uh, he's not living right now he's passed away but many of his past lives and every lifetime that he has there's a poignant that he's had that I've saw, seen there's a moment in his life where he stood before someone and gave them the choice will you choose light or darkness and one of his lifetimes he was um, shot this would have been like in the west in like maybe late 1800s he was shot tied to a um, horse drug to his death left in front of his his house where his wife and his two kids were I was his wife in that lifetime and he was his wife was told if you continue his light work his work which was light work you and your children will suffer the same fate and we worked as a team he was an attorney and I was like a paralegal I guess you could say um, and uh, I met him when I was in college, which was very rare for a woman in that time to go to college, but every lifetime I've never been, um, I've always broken the mold. I've never followed the paradigms. I've never, that's not my role when I'm born in any incarnation. Um, but me and the kids moved to San Francisco. We were in the panhandle of Texas, I believe, or possibly Nebraska, but, um, I believe it was the panhandle of Texas and we ended up taking the train to San Francisco and we relocated there um, but he had many lifetimes where he faced that type of challenge where he gave someone who was choosing darkness he gave them the opportunity to choose the light to make the right choice and not kill him not hurt him right to choose goodness and so um, I could say the same thing about myself all the traumas that I've been through in my life people had the choice to either do the right thing or continue with what they were doing and hurt me whether it was through physical abuse whether it was sexual abuse whether it was um, emotional abuse um, you know, all those people of what, that I stood in front of had the choice to do the right thing or to hurt me. And a lot of them chose the wrong thing, chose to hurt me. And so we all have those opportunities. There are many light workers on this world who have faced darkness and given the darkness a choice to choose light or choose the proper choice choose your path and purpose or choose the darkness and so everybody has had the opportunity to make the right choice and so that's why I said the right choice based on what their agreement was their path and purpose in this life okay when they were born into this world and that's why I say everybody has made the choice whether they're going to transcend with their words, with their actions, with their intentions, with their thoughts. All those events, all those moments, all those thoughts have been recorded in the Akashic Records. And the Universal Source knows what that is. And you, your higher self, knows what that is. And so you will have chosen 
based on those words and actions, even if it's and uh, experiences and thoughts, even if it's in your subconscious, you have made the choice. And um, the divine source, that energy, how however this works, will move and move you to another world. Okay, you will be incarnating on another world in the future. And um, and so sometimes I see, I watch. So I, I need to stop. I really enjoy watching some uh, people and some light workers on um, different um, video channels. But sometimes I see the pain um, from that truth and they don't want to believe it. Um, they don't want to believe that not everybody will continue to incarnate on here. And um, they want to believe that everybody can be saved and they want to believe that everybody will transcend and they want to save everybody. And one thing I've learned, and it's taken me five or six years of this information coming in, but when I connect to the source energy, when I connect to the collective consciousness, I can feel the weight. I can feel the weight of the people who have chosen to not be here. It's very hard for me to feel that energy of the people who have not either done the work, who choose not to do the work. It's just too much work to remain here on this world or just have down flat out chosen the darkness, but they do exist. And we're not meant to save everybody. We're not meant to, we're meant to give people the opportunity. We're meant to give people the information that they need in order to make their own choice on what they're going to do and how they're going to do it or whether they're going to do it. But each individual fractal, each individual consciousness makes the choice for themselves. And those choices determine the flow of energy. Those choices determine the um, flow of energy on earth and how that manifests changes every with every thought every moment so what that will look like on earth as we move through this changes so i wouldn't even begin to predict what that might look like but i do know that the choices have been made and that not everybody who is here on this world in this moment will be in will continue to incarnate on here. And I'm gonna address really quick, I know I've heard people call this a prison planet. Don't go to the light. First go to the light, then don't go to the light. So I'm just gonna say, um, these are all paradigms that people are trying to plant into your consciousness to, com to create fear, okay? We all know what we're meant to do. We can feel it. Um, we can feel it on earth if you connect. You can feel it from this physical body. Or when you pass, you feel it. You know. You have guides that are there to help you. You have energies there to support you. I have incarnated on this world since its inception, since it had conscious life on it. Some people are new souls. Um, I don't know why a new soul would really be placed here. They could be very vulnerable, but also they can all be very fortified because they're not carrying that weight of past life karma. But without the proper support, this could be a very difficult world for a young soul. But I have chosen this world. I have chosen to come back over and over again to help Mother Earth transcend. That is one of my light working obligations, not only on this world, but every world, because I can endure what most cannot. I can endure and find my way back to center. 
and they have a very good friend who's the same way very powerful energy male he is the yang to my yin i guess um very very powerful energy uh and he completely blows my mind and he helps me see my own inner strength um and I'm very grateful for that because sometimes I lose sight of that. Especially when I start feeling other people's pain when that empathy starts coming in. It can be very difficult. It can be overwhelming. Especially when I get that collective consciousness coming through. And I start feeling the weight. It can be overwhelming. Um, but some people choose we're not prisoners on this planet. Nobody can imprison us on this planet. They can make you think that you've been imprisoned on this planet with psychology by planting those seeds. Nobody's a prisoner on this planet. All time is happening simultaneously in this moment. All time, all your lifetimes are happening simultaneously. How can you be imprisoned? Nobody's imprisoned. This is an experience. We're all having an experience. And we're sharing that experience with each other and the collective of this divine source energy. Perspective is of the utmost importance. We must have perspective. We must release these paradigms that we're living in. See this world from a new perspective and then eventually see our interconnectedness with all of the rest of the universe. Okay, that's what this transcendence is about. Our, we're not isolated, that we're connected not only to each other and to our world, to Mother Earth, but to the universe as a whole. Okay, and in order to do that, we have to release these old ideas, these old paradigms, okay? There will be no currency. I'm going to say that again because I hear it a lot. The redistribution of wealth. The wealth of this world is in the people and the emotion, the depth and breadth of emotion that they carry and the capacity for unconditional love for themselves, for ourselves, and for each other. That is the wealth in the, on this world. And once we fully embrace that, this world will flourish in a way that is incomprehensible. Incomprehensible. I, you can't even see it. You can't even imagine what this world would be like, will be like. And there's not going to be any currency. I, um, it's one of the things that frustrates me and I try to, I get frustrated and I try to release it. But every time I hear it, I feel like people are really still holding on to old ideas and I understand the difficulty in releasing them people if you release money you have to release your things well if you can imagine a redistribution of wealth why can't you imagine a redistribution of things without wealth without money why does why does there ha why does it have to be tied to currency why can't we just have a redistribution of energy, of love? Let's get the love flowing. Let's get that unconditional love and acceptance of one another, regardless of race, religion, socioeconomic background, regardless of the kind of car you drive or the neighborhood you live in. Why can't we get that flow of love going for one another without boxes without labels without stereotypes and categorizing why can't we just live from a place of loving and appreciating everybody and what they bring to the community and then sharing the wealth of things that we have we have enough food for everybody on this planet. We have enough gas for everybody on this planet. We have enough shelter and blankets and clothes for everybody on this planet. So why don't they have it? 
Why doesn't everybody on this planet have what they need? Hoarding. People are hoarding stuff so that make, to make you think that you, we don't have enough. People are making you pay for it. And if you don't have enough money, then you can't have it. You need to give me something to get something. Well, that's not true. That's just what we've been led to believe. And that's what we're releasing. So what do you need to do to release the paradigms that you have come to believe that are necessary to exist, to be happy, to be fulfilled? Because what I learned when I went to, I went to, did my undergraduate at Pepperdine University. My dad was an electrician for the federal government. He was retired for like 10 years by the time I went to college. And my mom was a secretary. And when I went to school there, I kind of coveted, like all these kids had credit cards, they could spend whatever they wanted. And they had all these nice cars. And I had a 10 year old Toyota Celica. But you know what? My dad gave me his car. So I had a car when I went to school in Southern California. I was from Northern California. My dad walked to work. So I had a car or my mom drove him. Um, I came to realize by four years at school there, the, the best thing I ever had in my life was my mom and dad. The best thing that this life offered me, the best gift that God ever gave me was my mom and dad, was the time and attention that they gave me. Because what I realized is these students, they had cards, they had credit cards, but that's all they had. They didn't have the time and attention of their parents because their parents didn't make time for them. They were too busy traveling or going to parties or shopping or whatever. They substituted emotional bonding with material things. And when I graduated from college, I was more grateful for my mom and dad than I ever could have been when I was younger or before that experience. Because I realized the most valuable things that I was given had nothing to do with material goods. It had to do with the love, the support, the time and attention that my parents gave me. That is what, where the value is. Okay. It has nothing to do with material belongings, but somebody convinced society that that was the case. So what do you need to do to understand that the most valuable thing that you have to offer is yourself, whether it be to your children, whether it be to your community, whether it be to your, um, profession, whatever you choose to do to support your community and your family, um, what will it, will, what does it take for you? What will it take for you to understand that? And I've also, I've talked about um, Ubuntu contributionism, which I think is a, um, it's a Ubuntu philosophy of contributionism. It's a, um, way to support your community as a whole without currency. Um, and I did, haven't talked about it in like maybe two years, but that is more where we're going to head. It may be modified a little bit. I don't know. Or maybe it'll be exactly as it is. Um, I think Michael Tellinger is a really big advocate for that. He has an organization, Ubuntu Planet. Um, which is trying to start these communities across the planet, but that is more indicative of where we're going. We're not going to a currency system, another currency system. We're not going to a cryptocurrency system. We're not going to a quantum currency system. If we do, it will be short lived and it will be managed by Zeko until we, re and he will manage it as a means to transition from currency into the system of uh, non-currency to Ubuntu planet or something similar to that. So, um, oh God, I feel like I've talked so much. Give me a second.
So Merlin's come in very strong and uh, earlier and just now. And I just asked him, I said, did I completely go off the rails? And he's like, oh no, very good. And um, so in the beginning, I'll just say when I was clearing my energy, um, Merlin comes straight in beings in the water just a little bit behind gladiola and then they kind of opened um, a pathway and then just tons of beings um, to the of the universe to the left and right of this like pathway and it was um, through space I guess you could say um, and uh, like outer space and uh, and then there was a wormhole and they told me to walk through the wormhole or they asked they said you you know they kind of implied it with this pathway opening up and so I went into it and I went into the void and um, engaged this energy this uni unity source energy and uh, was told th it's the circle of creation which I've gone into the circle of creation in the past but the void is where creation begins and it's not black it's void so it seems black but it's not truly blackness it's just the void and the spark of creation starts there and um, it's pure consciousness and uh, and so just the message was and I'm just gonna summarize because it was a lot of communication that happened um, was that this is um, the beginning of uh, um, the creation um, this is the beginning of manifesting um, new earth mother earth uh, in a new vision um, a new reality um, we are in this place of pliability of um, the void and creation and uh, and so I was told stay positive stay very positive keep your thoughts positive and manifest from that place because um, it's time it's time basically that's what I was told it's time okay I think that's it thank you